Around the end of 2021, Seiko in Japan gave away these little presents to anybody who bought a watch in one of their stores. It's taken me a while, but I've managed to collect all 14 varieties, so let's see what they are. On the box, we can see there are um, models, 12 different models here, but it says there are 14 altogether, so there are two secret ones that are not pictured. Apart from that, it doesn't tell us anything about what's inside, so we're going to have to open it. Unfortunately, they made these pretty hard to open without damaging, so I'm going to use a, a toothpick here. It's just a thin card uh, box on the outside, and then a kind of foam thing inside, which again, doesn't really give you anything to grip onto without ripping the box, so really hard to open. I'm going to try and tap it gently. Here it comes. Aha! Uh -huh. What is it? Come on. Oh. All right. Oh, <laughs> dislodged a bit whilst I was shaking it around. There we go. We can easily get rid of the foam outer. And inside we have a little Seiko Astron. Now this is the most recent of the set, the latest one, 2012 Seiko Astron. And this is the 7X520AA0, I think. And so basically it's the first of the modern generation of Seiko Astron. We might see an older Seiko Astron in a minute, but there we go. So yeah, it's a pin badge. And so we can actually take it out of that little presentation block. There we go. So it's secured on with a regular little fastener at the back. Take that off. And eventually we'll get Okay, the pin badge itself. As we can see, it's really small, um, about two centimeters wide and roughly three centimeters tall, but really nicely made in my opinion. The case is just a sort of solid block of metal and the dial is somehow printed with some kind of protected covering put over it. I don't know about materials I'm afraid so I don't know what it's made of but it does mean that there's quite a bit of detail in there. So much so that I have seen people selling these on Merukari in Japan and people have asked does it work? Have you changed the battery? Things like that because from the photo they think it's a real watch. Really nicely done. So this is the newest one from the collection and it actually covers almost a hundred years. So Starting with this one, let's go back in time and look at all of them. Right, let's start going through them all one by one then. And next we have the 1999 spring drive, the first spring drive. I think it was something like 20 years in development. Um, so a yeah, big achievement by Seiko here. And this is the 7R68 movement. The model number is uh, 7R680A10. Quite a simple looking one, but obviously very historically important. In fact, many of these are the first something. So the Astron we saw was the first, the world's first GPS solar watch. This is the first spring drive watch. And what have we got next? It's not a first, but it is. Oh, I suppose it's kind of a first, isn't it? Um, this is the first tuner. This is 1975. They just call it a mechanical diver. Oh, tuner is so much better. Why didn't they put that on there? <laughs> I really like this one. As you can see, they've uh, this is um, the matte black uh, finish, uh, whereas all the others are either chrome or, or gold. Shall we see what it looks like compared to a recent full-size tuner? <laughs> there we go. Oh. Now you can get mini tuners or baby tuners, but this is a baby, baby tuner. Really nice. There are a few divers in here, actually. Uh, those are my favorites. They were, they were the hardest for me to get hold of, actually, the divers. Um, but the next one is not a diver. It is a very popular one. Here we go. 1969 Seiko 5 Sports Speed Timer. The world's first automatic chronograph available on the market, available to the public. And, of course, very popular today. Really nice uh, nice dial on this one. Okay, what's next? It is the same year. It's another Astron. It's the original. 
1969 quartz astron world's first quartz watch um, they have this on display at the seiko museum in tokyo which is really nice to see this is probably the closest i'll get to owning one in fact owning pretty much all of these models so it's really nice to have this there's a lovely finish on that case okay we're going to go back one year to 1968 and in 1968 there is this one the beautiful solid one-piece case 1968 mechanical diver this is the 6159 7000 uh, widely regarded as the the first high beat diver kind of high high beat really nice there i think this might be my favorite of the divers but there is another one coming up go back to 1965 and here we get this one the 62 mass 62 mas called that because it's automatic the ma self data s so ma s 62 mass kind of a bit of a stretch to make that acronym i think but 62 mass is there 6217-8000 and a lot of people see this as seiko's first proper proper diver okay let's go back one more year and we're moving away from divers into chronographs again this is the obviously the single pusher chronograph 1964 crown chronograph made for the um, tokyo olympics of that year 1964 really like the uh, the two-tone of this the bezel was uh, black plastic on the original uh, but pretty soon afterwards they changed it to a metal bezel this is uh 45899 i believe and it's um japan's first watch with a stopwatch with a chronograph right what's next i'm going to go back a few years now and the all the rest would be uh, quite simple uh, watches this is if it'll focus 1959 laurel alpinist the first alpinist i believe i've just realized i've missed one out i missed one of the secret ones out ah we'll get to that in a second um this is i think this is 14041 the model number and this is kind of the origin of sort of Seiko sports watches. It's not got a chronograph or anything like that, but it was built to be uh, very legible. And it's sort of got, you can kind of see sort of the, um, obviously it's not leather on this, but it was a leather patch behind there designed to absorb sweat for when you're doing um, mountain climbing, hiking and sort of activities like that. Right, moving on. The one that I missed out, we're going to go back to 1961 actually because this is the first King Seiko. So this is uh, one of two secret models which are not displayed on the pack and on the, uh, the literature on their website when they released these. This, I believe, is the J14102 King Seiko, and they made it to the same standards as for Swiss uh, chronometers. Obviously, uh, King Seikos have been reissued recently, so uh, it's gained in popularity, I think. Right, what's next? I go back to 1950s, and this is 1956, the first Seiko Marvel. And I think this is the watch where they introduced their Dia Shock suspension, uh, shock absorption system inside on the balance wheel. Uh, very uh, nicely produced. I think this is the first watch where they produced or they designed the movement completely in house from scratch rather than basing it on a Swiss uh, movement or sort of using the design of Swiss movements. At the time, it was the most precise watch of its day, designed to compete with global watchmakers. So kind of like no longer Japan is like a cheap copy kind of thing. Right, also in 1956, they brought out Japan's first automatic watch. It had hand winding as well, I believe. There we go. And so it's got a little power reserve on the top there. Nice simple one. I don't have a model number for that, I'm afraid. What else do we have? Okay, we're now gonna go back even further. Got quite a jump back. This is 1924 and it's the second of the two secret watches. And this is the first Seiko branded 
watch. Obviously it's uh, small dials there at the bottom. And this was really small. I think it was a 24 millimeter case made of nickel. This is a year after the big um, earthquake in Tokyo, which destroyed so much and it destroyed a lot of um, Seikosha uh, sort of machinery and, and the shop. Again, you can see a lot of um, information about this in the, the Seiko Museum in Tokyo. And so we've got one more going another 10 years back. I'm recording this in 2023. So this is what was that, 110 years ago. And this is the first Seiko wristwatch. They called it the Laurel. And I believe this was actually a silver case at the time. And it was again, pretty small. I think it was around 26 millimeters wide. So there you go, the complete historical collection of pin badges with the 12 public ones here and the two secret ones here. Seiko don't give these out anymore to people who buy watches. Uh, you can sometimes get a different free gift instead, but these are available online secondhand pretty easily, at least in Japan. On Yahoo auctions, there are several. I got most of these on uh, Merukari in Japan, maybe eBay as well, I haven't checked. If you do want to buy them, they're about 20 to $30 uh, each one, uh, although that you know, may change in the future. Um, the boxes usually come with them, um, but do look out for damage. So because they're so hard to take out, I've seen several that have got creased or torn lids and sometimes even just ripped off completely. So watch out for the condition of the box if you try and get these secondhand. Thank you to Seiko for making these available uh, to those of us that can't afford just yet to buy the real things. And I hope you enjoyed that little trip through the collection.